In the third video, we'll continue looking at routing of entities, uh, except this time we will use something called NodeList to assist with routing. So the sample model that we're going to use, uh, you can see shown here, we have arrivals of entities and they can go, uh, arriving entities can go to one of three servers. And so we have a um, um, typical situation where uh, an entity arrives at a point and they the entity decides uh, which server to uh, to go to and so for this example we're going to have uh, pretty significant differences in the processing characteristics at each of the three servers and so the server one is going to be relatively slow so it takes 10 minutes to process approximately 10 minutes to process the entity server two takes approximately five minutes and server one takes uh, approximately one minute. And so what we're going to do in this video is look at how to use node lists to facilitate the routing decision that entities have uh, upon arrival. And I neglected to mention also that parts will arrive to our system at the rate of 60 per hour. So in just looking at uh, the processing, uh, server 1 can process at the rate of 6 per hour, uh, server 2 at the rate of 12 per hour, and server 3 at the rate of 60 per hour. So we have a total processing rate of our entire three server system of uh, 78 entities per hour, and so uh, this the system should in fact be stable. Okay, so let's uh, open Simio and let's uh, build our initial model. So we will uh, put a sync down and we have our three servers which we will just leave with the default names of server 1, server 2, uh, server 3 and finally we have a sync node and let's put uh, model entities uh, right here and so we will connect our system and for this example we're, we use connectors and I will come back and talk about why I chose to use connectors uh, in a little bit later after we uh, do the initial analysis. So let's connect everything up using connectors like so. And at this point we can run and observe what happens and we haven't adjusted any of our uh, entity, our um, uh, object instance parameters. So we have what we expect to be an equal probability of going to server one, server two, server three. They all have the same processing rate. Uh, each one individually could keep up with the output of the source. So we would expect there to be virtually no queuing uh, in the system. And so we can increase the uh, animation speed and we see that we get what we expect, that there is virtually no queuing uh, in the system as, as we have. So let's uh, reduce our speed factor so we don't forget to do that for now and go back and fill in the parameters for our model. So we have parts that arrive uh, and let's make everything exponential for now. And we said they arrive approximately, approximately rate of 60 per hour. So we will say the inner arrival time is random exponential with a mean of one minute. Uh, the service time for um, the first server uh, again, let's use exponential here uh, because it's easy. And let's gonna we're gonna make this one 10 minutes. And we are going to make the processing time for uh, server two exponential with a mean of five minutes. And finally, server three exponential with a mean of one minute exponential one minute. Okay, so now we have our parameters in. We have the arrival rate at approximately 60 per hour, the service time at approximately 10 minutes for server one, approximately five minutes for server two, and approximately uh, one minute for server three. So now before we talk about routing, if we just click go, what would we expect to happen? Well, as I said previously, since we haven't changed from the default, we would expect entities to be routed probabilistically. And so we have an equal probability of going to server 1, server 2, and server 3. And so what we expect is approximately 20 entities per hour go to server 1, approximately 20 per hour go to server 2, and approximately 20 per hour go to server 3. Since server 1 takes 10 minutes, uh, it can only process at the rate of 6 per hour, so we would expect it to be overwhelmed. Uh, 
server two processes at the rate of 12 per hour so similarly we'd expect it to be overwhelmed probably not as quickly as server one and server three we would expect to um, uh, be hardly utilized uh, at all because it can process at the rate of uh, 60 per hour so let's go ahead and click go and watch and see if this in fact happens so i guess i didn't need to turn down the process the uh, speed factor and so let's just watch and see uh, how entities uh, arrive. So let's go ahead and increase this a little bit more. And we can see exactly what we expect to happen is happening. If we increase the length of this, you can see that this is growing uh, significantly. We have uh, a queue uh, here in front of server two, and we have virtually no queue in front of server three. So let's go back and control, <laughs> control Z and get our uh, uh, cues back to their normal um, size and let's look at what we would like to have happen I mean clearly what's happening here is we as we said since we're routing entities probabilistically uh, a third go in each uh, direction and that's really not what we want here because we have such a massive uh, speed um, mismatch between server 1, server 2, and server 3 clearly we like to have more entities uh, arrive to uh, be sent to server 3 so one thing we could do is we could figure out the relative uh, arrival rates that we'd like to see. So we could take our uh, arrival rate of 6 to server 1, our arrival rate of 12 to server 2, and uh, 60 to server 3, and figure out by just dividing, figuring out what the relative proportion should be. So in other words, 60 divided by 78% should go here uh, in the long term, uh, 10 of 78 should go here, and finally, 6 of 78 should go here. So I'm just figuring out the relative proportion by combining the uh, processing rates of all three servers. And we could do that, and you should probably give that a try and make sure that it behaves as you would expect. For our case, though, we want to do something a little bit different. Instead of using probabilistic routing, what I want to do is I want to use specific routing. So when an entity arrives at this position, I want to decide where I should send that. And clearly what we'd like to be able to do is send the entity to the server that's going to, in all likelihood, be available first. And so we're going to look at how to do that first. To do that, we're going to investigate a little bit further this entity destination or in the routing logic group. So I select the output of source one, and we have the ent entity destination type. And we haven't talked about this, uh, what this is, but this uh, there, are, there are several options here. You have by sequence, continue, select from list, and specific. And continue just means uh, to continue to the destination or to use the um, selection weight if no destination is specified. And that's what we've done previously. This time, however, we want to use the select from list option. And so the first thing I need to do is create a list of the potential alternative uh, nodes. And so there are two basic ways to create a list of nodes. I can go to make sure model is selected. I can go to definitions and there is a list uh, option here and I can create a node list. So we'll just leave it at node list one. And our alternatives are input at server one, input at server two, and input at server three. So we created a list of potential destinations and we called it node list one. A shortcut to creating a node list is to just use multi-select. So I select all three of my inputs, then right click, and then I can add to node list and create a new node list. And so we'll just create another node list called node list two. And so now when I go back to my definitions, you see that I have uh, two copies of the same list. So we don't need two lists, so we'll just remove this one. And again, the typical way to do this, the easiest way is to use uh, the shortcut. Now that we have the list, we need to tell the output at source one to use that list. So I'm going to select entity destination type. This time I'll choose select by list. Immediately it comes up with an error telling me, okay, you've said select by list. Now you need to select the node list. So we will go select node list one. And then also we see when we say select from node list that we have a set of additional properties. So in addition to the node list name, we also have selection goal, selection condition, and blocked destination rule.
there are, in terms of the selection goal, in other words, how do I select from the list, there are several different options, uh, smallest distance, longest distance, preferred order, and so on. And we're going to look at just a few of these, and I would suggest that you have a look at uh, the remaining ones and make sure you understand the choice. Uh, the default, which is preferred order, basically says, I want to go in the order that you specified. So the list is in a specific order, which is called the preferred order. So input server one, followed by server two, followed by input at server three. And so at this point, since I have the default picked, if I click go, it's simply going to route all the entities to server one which is really not what we want. Now, one thing that we could do is we could also uh, limit the buffer capacity. So the reason that server one is always being selected is that from the perspective of the node, the server one has essentially infinite capacity because the default buffer capacities are set to infinity. So let's change those to zero. And now we have zero buffer capacity, the opposite. And what's going to happen now when I click go using the preferred order rule is it's going to go in the uh, order of the list. So it's going to check server one and if it's avail available, it'll send there. Go to server two if it's available. Uh, go to server three if it's available. So it's looking only for available servers in the order that you specify. So this gives us a better solution than we had before, but it's still not exactly what we want because all things being equal, we don't want to go to server one. Right? All things being equal, we'd rather go to server three. So I could go in my list, in my uh, list, and just reorder the sequence. So now we have server three, server two, server one. And when we run, now you see that in when all things are equal, server three is uh, receives the entity. Also note that there, since we have no input buffer, the output node at source one is where the entities wait. So we're essentially putting off the decision uh, to uh, route the entity. And this pr process also works is we increase if we use different buffer capacity. So for example, if I say buffer capacity three at each station, then what's going to happen is server three will be filled, followed by server two, and then finally uh, server one. So another alternative is to use the uh, smallest value first and when of, of, an, of an expression and when I do that Simeo gives me the default expression of candidate node associated station overload. Kind of a confusing uh, topic and so let's take a look at what that actually does. So I'm going to go to the Simeo help let me uh, open this and fit it to the screen and go into uh, learning, uh, mo sorry, modeling in Simeo and expression editor and, fu and uh, functions. And I want to look for functions in Simeo automatic and functions, states, and events for node object. Note that I could have also gotten here by just searching for the associated station overload, uh, which is what we saw. Uh, here is so we have associated station overload. If I'd searched for that, I would end up at the same place. And what we're interested in looking at is this: these three items of associated station, associated station, and associated station overload. Because as you saw, when we simply selected the smallest value first, Simeo used this um, associated station overload as the default value. So what Simio, what associated station overload says is it returns the difference between the load and capacity values. And so the load is defined as the sum of the current entities in route to the node intending to enter the stations plus the current entities already arrived to the node but still waiting to enter the stations plus the current entities occupying the stations. And so this function, associated station overload, for a particular node returns the uh, overload value. And so if we look at the syntax of our expression, we see that we have candidate.node.associated station overload. And so what that means, since we have selected from a list the smallest value, Simeo will look at all of the elements in the list. We have three elements, input at server one, input at server two, input at server three. And for each of those, which is 
the candidate keyword comes in and the candidate from the particular list we're searching is a node uh, object, we're going to compute the associated station overload function and then we will pick the one that has the smallest value. And so in essence what this will do, and let me go back and change these capa uh, capacities back to zero, is it will pick the the uh, node from the list that has the smallest overload value. And so when we run, we can see that server three will be uh, have significantly more entities uh, being sent. So the difference between this overload function and the preferred order that we just saw is that the preferred order will send if there is capacity in the input buffer or the processing station in the order in which they appear in the list. Whereas the overload function will select the one that has the fewest uh, entity. So if I have the buffer capacity here and I don't have the buffer capacities at zero, say my buffer capacity is five, for example, then the um, uh, preferred order rule would only send entities to server two and server three if there were five entities in the input buffer to server three, since that's the preferred order. In the overload case, what it does is it will, at this point, select the one that has the fewest number of entities total between the processing, the uh, input buffer, and in route. And since we choose connectors, there is no in route, but if we had used paths, we would have, in have entities that are uh, in route. And it also incorporates the capacity. So the idea is that this overload function attempts, uh, attempts to figure out which server will be available next. A final alternative that we'll look at here uh, is the, to, to make the choice by minimum queue length. So if we go back to our documentation, um, the Simeo documentation, we can look at this notion of an associated station. And so again, we're looking at functions, states, and events for node objects. So each node object has an associated, associated station function that returns a reference to the immediate station location. So what's going to happen when we use associated station for our node list is it will return the station the input station associated with the server. And so in this particular case for server objects, what that will do is return either this station, the input buffer, if it has uh, capacity greater than zero, or it will return the processing station if there is no input buffer. So we can change our uh, selection goal away from uh, associated station overload and just pull up associated station and so look at contents. And so what this is saying is I have a list of three nodes and for each candidate node I'm going to take its associated station's contents and then I will select the smallest from those, of those three values. And so now when we run, uh, we see that we are exclusively looking at the capacity or the, the, number of, the number of entities in the buffer to make the selection um, decision. And so this scenario will work even if we have infinite uh, input buffers. We saw that the, uh, um, the um, a preferred order rule didn't work when we had infinite buffer because each server essentially had infinite capacity. The same is true with the uh, overload function. The, if we have infinite capacity buffers, the overload will simply return infinity and it will end up selecting in the preferred order rule because every, uh, every candidate will have the same value. So in this video, we've seen how to use node lists so we have three potential destinations. We created a node list and then we selected from this list to make a dynamic selection of our destination. And this is a fundamentally different process than we saw in the previous video where we use selection weights. And we use selection weights to either route probabilistically or we had a static condition that was evaluated which essentially uh, uh, evaluated down to a 
probability of 0 or 1. So the, while the selection weights provide significant flexibility, it would be very difficult to implement something equivalent to the uh, station overload or even the minimum Q length by using selection weights. And so that's why we went to this alternative method of using the dynamic selection with node lists.